In terms of business sectors, this isn't a sexy one. It's cleaning bins for a living. And really, you should be making a lot of money if you're in the waste game because not a lot of people want to do it. This guy has got loads of customers, over a thousand customers. Problem is, they're only paying him £5 each. So we need to turn this business around and get that average order value up so we've actually got a chance of profitability. Take a watch. Well, welcome back to Business Broadcast Campus. JB is joining me again here to help grow people's businesses. Hey, Jim, how have you been? Yeah, I've been good. Been. How oh, hey, been. been. Yeah, I've been good. That's what we're doing we're gonna today. Have to get, we're going to have to get tighter on the comedy if mm. we're going to if we're going to roll this out. For well, if, it's funny, let's just... <laughs> if it's funny, I'll get involved. Um, yes, yeah. Well, let, let's get straight into it. We are doing this podcast live in Leicester Square. Live in Leicester Square, which is in London, not London. Leicester. London, not yeah. the Leicester London. Uh, not the, the London Leicester. Yeah, not that. We're doing it <laughs> in the middle of central London, in Leicester Square. For £32, you can come and see me and James Burr um, perform. There's like proper famous people on that lineup as well, isn't there? Yeah. Like before us and after us. It's a very yeah. weird comedy. Do you see any of the other shows that are around our dates? It's why like an alien we, comedy thing. Why don't we market our own show yeah, rather sure. than other people's? <laughs> I think that's more important at this point. Um, so, yeah, we're going to the Leicester Square Theatre where we are going to do golden nuggets of business advice to help grow your business. And if you come to one of my seminars, 300, 200, 500, 600 pounds to come to one of our seminars. But this is just 32 pounds. It's an evening of light entertainment with brilliant business knowledge. It's going to be good. Yeah. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You get in this case, you're the average of the 400 people 400 in the theatre. people, yeah. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, it's um, going to be fun. If you'd like to buy your tickets and come along to Business Broadcast Live, tickets are selling fast, and you can buy them on our website, jamesinclair.net, uh, which will take you to a link to Leicester Square Theatre where you buy the tickets. Or just type in James Sinclair Podcast, Leicester Square Theatre, and I'm sure Google will do the job for you. Hopefully, if you put, if you put in the exact search well, uh, term. Yeah, 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 we should. <laughs> um, now... This this gentleman that's joining us today, Andre Andrassi, who has a very cool name, has got a business that's called Utility Hygiene Bin Cleaning Services. He managed to get every SEO title in the in the business name. Good yeah. move. I like it as a marketing hack. And his website is UHBCS. <laughs> okay. Dot UK. There you go. Uh, he's been going a few years. He's doing about six hundred. Six grand a month. Six grand a month. Yes, he's been going a couple of years. I think he's he's got one team member, isn't he, at the moment? Um, and the challenge, as you alluded to at the beginning, is finding the staff. Now, as you said, not all businesses are sexy. Hygiene bin cleaning is probably about as unsexy as it gets. Mm -hmm. But as they used to say back in the day, where there's muck, there's brass. Didn't <laughs> Did they? they? I don't right. know where they said that with that weird accent. It's very very, very much like Sheffield, where where Andre's from. I think. The saying is, where there's trash, there's cash. No, it's muck, there's brass. That's a saying, isn't it? Where I've, there's muck, there's brass. Thank uh, you. Yeah. I've definitely heard where there's trash, there's cash. Well, there, there, there is. Mm. Uh, this is a very, very profitable business, if you get it right, isn't it? Well, certain areas of waste can be very profitable. Yes. But it is highly commoditized. There's lots of competition. Do you have... You must have, like, bin I'm cleaning man, facilities. I'm a man that probably spends close to £650,000 on getting rid of stuff a year. Really? Mm. And do you have the special the hygiene bins that you have yeah, to have? Yeah, all of that gear. I've got compactors and all sorts of bins. Oh, so you deal with it yourself? We compact it and then have it taken away, yeah. Okay. So we've got, I think we've got three compactors across our estate, which is like a big thing that squishes waste. What I, it's interesting, this model, I, th I think, uh, I wrote down the word model about this business, because if you are prepared to be in waste, mm. you want to choose the, the part of waste that's more profitable. Yeah. It's all right to have, I mean, if you look at waste companies, do you know the Euro bins, we call them Euro bins, which are the, the most common bin that you'll see outside of a commercial premises, big four wheels on the bottom and they yeah, go the on the back of the lead, lorry. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. So we are. Uh, we call them euro bins um they're like 15 quid a lift something like that right um and you got to do a lot of them to make money and this yeah. is my brief understanding of waste i think there's more money in you know getting a grab a lorry picking grab lorry picking stuff up and yeah. the big container skips um all the stuff inside of places where it is like yeah, hygiene hazardous waste. waste. Hazardous yeah, yeah, I think, you so know, to manually go again, and do right, it. we always say the more niche it is, the more money there is. Yeah. Um, because the, the, the commoditized service gets commoditized. Yeah. Um, 
here we're just cleaning bins uh, i think i mean we'll need to find that out and these you know saying challenges cash flow how to gain more customers and finding stuff you know if you're prepared to be in waste i i would i would get some of the commoditized services on board yeah maybe doing euro bins and just general skips to help you find the niche stuff because that's what i've learned we've got our waste company that do all of our commoditized stuff but then if we're doing a building project and we want big waste we always go to them because they're our uh, regular okay. people and i do think sometimes you know supermarkets selling bread and milk yeah. you go in there for the other services because you get a good price on the commoditized stuff and they make their profit on the stuff that's not commoditized Lidl and Audi are exactly the same you look at the Lidl and Audi business model all the food and everything on the outside of the shop break even makes mm. a small profit the tut in the middle is where they make all the their middle profit. of Lidl as they call it the middle of Lidl is where all the profit lies that's also why to, to use the analogy of the supermarkets that's why the bread and milk is always like the the furthest yeah. away because you've got to walk past all that other stuff and yeah. they've got to like no drum money go oh don't forget you need to You're buy like a pirate looking for treasure if you want treasure uh for milk and bread you know like, get your map out we've put that <laughs> yeah. right over there on that sponsor all of a sudden you yeah sponsor wall. you've got a uh, scented candle that you didn't walk you've got a two for one on bin bags you didn't know you got in for and why do well whilst on this why entry. do they put crisps and cereal at the back of the store because it's the most popular thing yeah, so you would say that. That's usually what people say. Oh, well, everyone wants cereal, and if you've got children, you buy a crisp. Yeah. So we'll put that right at the back. That's not the case. Oh, why is it? If you think about your supermarket layout, you oh. go in. Is it because it's the thing that gets filled up the most? Exactly so that, James steps. Burke. So when people are going in, they're putting all the smaller stuff in first. So subconsciously, we haven't spent much money today. If you start putting in big boxes of cereal, and big bags of crisps, your trolley looks full and you're subconsciously oh, wow, going, yeah. look how much I've spent. It's very clever supermarket layouts. It is very, do you know as well that with supermarket layouts, they will put, depends on the socio demographic of the area, they will, they will lay out the fronts of the shops differently. So in lower in lower income areas, there'll be things like the sweets, the soft drinks, and all that stuff is closer to the front to entice people through the door. Right. Yeah. So you can actually tell what sort of area you're in if you go into like the local ASDA because they will they will lay it out, but depending on what the local average um, income is. Mm. It's very interesting. All this bins stuff. and supermarkets. Bins and supermarkets. Welcome to the podcast, guys. I, I think a lot of people will be watching this going, "Oh, that's a good little yeah. bit of learning there." I didn't. I did not know that about the about the um, the crisps. So it makes the, sense, doesn't it? It, don't, put, it makes so much sense. You yeah. Know, if you put a, a big box of cereal in a then big bag of crisps, you're like, "Gosh, we spent some money today." But you also physically then can't fit to the other stuff because I always do it when I go to the supermarket. Like the, the the cereal box and the thing on the top is like it, it's falling off the side because you piled it on the top of all the other rubbish that you've got. Next time you go in, you will see that the supermarket gets bigger as you journey through. Like even all the big drinks, don't they? Like That's you know, yeah, a big yeah. bottle of Ribena. You don't want that the first thing you put in. It's very clever. Really, yeah. So you, know, you go in, you know, all the fruits and the nuts. So this know, is and this the cheeses and all the fresh and the ham I and the meat starving. is all first. It's smaller stuff that fits in. You don't Pack want to give the illusion yeah. that you've already spent money. This goes back to your fruit analogy that you use with like. Um, most customers and the actual customers that you want so in this instance what you're saying with andre's business potentially you want to have an offering that gets you yes. the most yes. customers so then you can hand pick, pick up the fruits of the ideal yeah. ones so i've been listening to the stuff it's very good what you say yeah i yes. don't care what the rest of the internet says about you jim st Clair. i think you're all right what does the internet say about oh. me last time i checked i typed into google best entrepreneurship podcast UK, yes you did and who came up us baby yes number four that's why you need to come to the theatre show because it gets better once you come there. There you go. <laughs> a lovely little upsell. Um, right. Where does uh, Andre want to be in one year's time to have more staff members and become a bigger business? What does the business look like when it's finished? Hopefully a successful project with £1 million in turnover with a 300k net profit. Uh, do you make the profit that you want to make? Well, the thing is, does he really think he can do a million quid worth of cleaning bins? It's a lot in of Sheffield. Bins, That's it's where he's based. It's a lot of bins. Um, do you make the profit uh, you want to? If so, what is it? At the moment, it's uh, only a small profit. I think he told us before it's about a thousand quid per month out of the six that he's doing in turnover. Uh, what do you do day to day with your time in the business? At the moment, I'm working on the business, actually cleaning the bins. Uh, and then on the less busy days, I'm gaining, I'm out um, trying to get new customers by doing canvassing. 
Right. So it's a very early stage business, I'd say this one. So hopefully we can give. If we look at the three, advice. the three stages of entrepreneurship: solopreneur, entrepreneur, investorpreneur. He is just building a profitable job, isn't he? Yes, without a doubt. Um, and then he's got five questions he'd like to ask me. Do you think we should do that quite early on? Because I think that could answer a lot of questions. Yeah, should we usually get... we do that at the end, but I think for this one, we'll mix it up, shall we? Yeah. Should we get him on? Say hello. Have yeah, a little let's get chit him on. chat, and then we'll maybe do the questions straight away. Andre, yeah. are you there, my friend? Yeah. Hi. Hello, mate. Good to have you on the show. Hello. Um, some I know we've we've sort of talked about it for about twenty odd minutes, as well as talking about how um, the psychology of supermarkets work, which was a random little trundle down um, <laughs> somewhere different than we went. But um, could you give us a little thirty second summary of you and the business, and how you've got to being on the pod today, and what you're doing as a company, etc. Yeah, no problem. So my name's Andre Andresi. I'm the owner of Utility Hygiene. Um, mainly on our day to day job roles, we go out to domestic homes cleaning the commercial and domestic waste bins and then also pressure washing and gutter cleaning yeah ah so are you so the bins you're talking about these are when you come on like a small truck and you clean out the the normal waste. so this is not going and picking up hazardous waste from commercial places this is cleaning household bins yeah, the that's, big that's stuff you put out on a wednesday when they come with the bin truck yeah, so it's household bins and also, also the commercial bins, what the bigger bins, what a lot of pubs and hotels have. So that's the Euro bin thing that you were Yeah, like about. the Euro bins, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. That's oh, correct. are they called Euro bins? I, I call them that. Is that what they're called? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I thought so. Good knowledge. Good knowledge. I don't know about supermarkets, bins. <laughs> All sorts oh, of good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. it turns a quid, <laughs> yeah. Jimbo's in for it. Okay, so how did, how did you get started in this business and how did you get your first customer? doing this okay yes yeah, so it was in covid right at the beginning of covid i thought to myself oh, there's not a lot of bin cleaners in the area so i thought it'd be a different route to go down instead of window cleaning where there's one on every road basically so i started up in uh the beginning of lockdown and i got my first customer by door knocking and facebook good door knocking and facebook so what are you doing facebook yeah, ads correct. Yeah, Facebook ads uh, targeting areas and also canvassing. So if I wanted um, to have you clean my bin, how much is it going to cost me? Okay, yeah. So um, we attend once per month where we charge an initial £8 for the first clean because it's always worse. But then the following month from then would be £5.50 per clean. And how many people have you got? signed up uh, we have over a thousand monthly customers wow signed up that's good going that how, how many how many bins can you do in a day how many can you watch okay yeah so for example our best day well a one one person can do up to 125 bins per day okay so you can get around all of your existing clients in six days seven days yeah that's correct so we only work monday to friday we, we we don't work weekends. We only work when the collections take place Monday to Friday. So in a day, you can do £625 worth of custom. Yeah, so that's correct. So some of our days, for example, are very busy where we have 125 bins and then the following day could be 100 bins. Um, and then the following week, for example, we could only have on the day 50 bins. So, how do you organise the? How do you organise the ones that you're going to clean? Do you sort of like a like a, a window clean? Like send them a text the day before. Have you got like a little CRM system that lets them know that you're doing a postcode area? Or how do you organise it? Okay, yeah, that's correct. So, what we do, we use uh, like a, a cleaner planner or squeegee, for example, and it lets us know the routes and where we are. And also, I've Come to time now with doing it for roughly three years. I know, do you know when all the collections take place locally in all the areas? So that's how we're, do you know, trying to venture into different areas. So do you just knock on the door and say, oh, we do your neighbour's bin. It costs you £5 a month to clean it, £8 for the first month. And people just sign up to a direct debit, do they? Oh, uh, yeah, that's correct. So basically, I just say, hi, my name's Andre. I'm from Utility Hygiene Bin Cleaning Services. We currently clean your neighbour's bin. I was just wondering if you'd like to be added to the local service. And it's either a yes or a no. 
And if you ask ten, decide. if you ask ten people, how many say yes or no? Okay, yes. Yeah, so, for example, out of ten people, on a good day it could be two or three. On a bad day, none. It just it all depends. We're canvassing. Our best day for canvassing, we've gone out and got forty in one day. Wow. And they just sign a direct debit form online, or you give them a form. Oh uh, no, so. At the moment, we are only accepting a cash or online bank transfer. So once we clean the bin, we leave like a, a receipt with all the payment information on, and then you would make the payment after the clean has taken place. But we are implementing now a go cardless to try and get everyone to sign up yeah. to a direct debit, so we're not chasing how payment often, after. Yeah, payment. how often do you get knocked? Um, yes, yeah, so, sometimes. Yeah. It all depends, really. I just wonder, like, do people really care about having their bin cleaned? But obviously, a thousand people do. Yeah, so you would actually be quite surprised. Uh, do you know how many people would like it cleaned? Um, especially, do you know, in the warmer months, where it's like November, December, January, February are very quiet because the bad weather. But then as the months start going on, you get a lot of pests around your bin. Yeah. And also, like, a lot of bad smells so and if they're near your property it's not very nice really that's what we try and market in our advertising yeah would you do it once once a month i don't even know when the last time our bins got cleaned i've never cleaned my bin no it's just, is it a thing i didn't even know it was a thing no i didn't really i remember there was a bin truck that used to come around my mum and dad's way and they would like because it used to stink when they would do it because they'd like obviously put it down all the drains locally mm. And it used to stink for a couple of days. Yeah. That Nigel just showing us his website. We'll put, we'll put um, a copy of the website up on the screen if you're watching on YouTube just so you can get your mind's eye, understand it. But the, the, the challenge is, Andre, is, you know, one of your challenges is cash flow. Can you make a lot of money from lots of five pounds? I suppose, yes, you can if you get enough people signing it up to it and it will be good predictable revenue but i would now be looking at ancillary services where there is more than five pound average order value like can you do add wi window cleaning to it can you do guttering cleaning it, yeah you say it does gutters and driveways and yeah, stuff yeah, so you, like pressure uh, washing. definitely something we're looking to add um because my brother was based in the same area has the window cleaning business so I, yeah but if you, you know, I think I would reverse engineer. Well, you have done that. You want a million pound turnover that makes 300,000. Um, you know, you're what, 6% of that, 7% of that at the moment. How do you massively scale that up? Yeah, I just think it's going to take a lot of hard work and dedication. I absolutely agree. Um, I would be you know maybe all these but but you've got these customers that are paying you a little bit of money mm. um can you add other services to them like starting a bigger waste firm you know can you actually do skips can you do um euro bin high you know can you build a little waste business have you thought about that oh yeah it's definitely something i've thought about because as you mentioned getting all these um other businesses and then folding them into one so it's definitely something I've been thinking about getting like a waste business to like put the two together kind of thing. I mean, I would contact a local waste firm to you and just say, look, I've got all these people I clean all their bins, loads of them asking me for skips. I want to buy a little skip lorry. Um, can you help me if I dump all my waste with you? I'm going to do a lot of the back work so that you go in with a bigger firm to you you know go off of their resources but it's your own brand it's your skips but you can dump all the waste with them go in and ju just drive around four or five of them and they might say well do you know funny thing is we've got a second hand lorry here do you want to do a deal with us so you can pay it over a period of time or you can rent the lorry from us you can rent your own skips from us and um, th they'll see that you've done this and i think there'll be someone in waste that would help you yeah, that sounds brilliant. Definitely something I would be more than interested in. Oh, that, that's how I'd be doing it. Um, I don't know, I, what is a waste lorry? I reckon you can get a 10, 15 grand lorry, one of them that's old, get you, get you going for the first year, get some good accounts, then you buy one, get some skips, get some euro bins, you know, 
so it will be a sub brand of a bigger business that you can because i know that you know getting rid of waste is is a very big investment mm. and not a lot of skin yeah. companies do that should we do the five questions? Yeah, let's, that, let's that do might, that. That let's might answer five. some of the questions that Andre's got. Um, so how to, this is sort of like more broadly speaking, obviously you've talked about the, the different areas you could go into, but one of the questions was how can you gain more customers? Um, and I think you touched on that. I, th- I think your market here, Andre, obviously, because you're going out in the daytime, you're going out probably in the yeah. areas where the bins have just been collected. That probably makes sense to go out. So if they get done round, you know, S14, which is an area that I know well because I used to have a couple of little properties there. If you S14 go out on a Tuesday, get out and canvas on the Tuesday when the bins are out there because it might be the sort of thing they go, oh, do you know what is out there? Yeah, just do it for us. But I think your market is going to be older customers who are there during the daytime. I think you're going to do yeah. a good job of the bins. You're going to be a nice person. They're going to be going, oh, do you want a cup of tea, love? Always have the cup of tea. Always have the cup of tea. And then there'll be, oh, because you do, you do driver as well. Oh, you do the gutter as well. Oh, because you do grass as well. I think there'll end up being so many other services once you get known for one thing by trusted little hubs of people. And then that word of mouth thing spreads. And I reckon this is potentially like, a, as well as the Google ads, um, sorry, the Facebook ads you've done. I think this is a bit of a, a little word of mouth game. And if you could... You know, if they if they hand out a card to one of their friends, or you know, Glennis introduces Jan. I'm using generic sort of older lady names, but if that's what happens, then the next time Glennis gets her bin done for free. Mm. Yeah. yeah, for for me, it is definitely the the bins are the gateway into to other skips stuff. and big waste. Because if they're paying you, that they're, they're predetermined to buy from you when they need to spend. Two hundred pound, and and I would be doing waste um, like uh, house clearance and stuff like that. You know, you have a full service that you know all these people they're giving Everything you a fiver. Waste, yeah. You want a sofa moved? We'll do it for you. You want anything cleared away? We'll do it for you. You need a skip? We'll do it for you. And and all these five pounds are you know for, for Disney. This is the the ticket to go and see the film that makes you buy the toys and makes you book the Disney cruise and go to Disney World. You have got something here where people can try before they really buy so it's not trying before you buy it's try and buy a little bit but if you can get it so that they can really buy from you so they're predetermined to buy from you when they want a 200 pound skip and they think of you because they've got that regular relationship really powerful i think the other thing as well it sounds a bit daft but i think that eight quid for the initial clean then five pound fifty thereafter i'd probably just average that out so they just pay one price yeah i agree with that because otherwise it's just a little bit confusing and then from yeah, because this of- whole thing you, you, the, the five pounds you should be thinking this is to get them into a habit of yeah. using us which is what disney plus is to disney it absolutely is it's a habit yeah. of giving disney a little bit of money you don't each month. seven quid each month do you and what consuming their content ready for when you then go and spend more and more and more i mean i've seen how my daughter's just got into little mermaid the original the, oh really the, i think it came out before you and i were born by the way yeah come on let's say nats has ordered a, a 25 pound aerial toy on amazon like these little figurines and she loves it like paying mm. with it non-stop and i just thought this is content yeah getting people paying you a little bit of money a lot of people watching this they go, actually, yeah, we will go to one of his seminars or we will pay for him to speak. Compare yourself to Little Mermaid now. Well, content. <laughs> yeah. And and having a little bit of spend with you yeah. before they spend a lot of money with you. And that's what I would see these bins as. You're never going to make lots of money from five pounds, but you're creating habits and that's very powerful. Yeah, definitely. You are, if you as Google, you know, people use Google mainly for free for searching. Mm. But because a lot of people do that, when you want to advertise and give them lots of money like I do, 20 grand a month on pay-per-click, you're ready to go, aren't you? Yeah. You condition them. What's the second one? Uh, second one, we take prepayment as well as standing orders. Do you think it would be good to have some paying in advance and some paying as soon as they have had their bins yeah, cleaned? I, mean, I, hate, I would get this into an app and get technology, all that time wasting yeah. and chasing money and chasing a fiver. I mean, if you add up all your time, like chasing mm. the, so the people that are Oh, God. That. Oh, window cleaner does it. He's yeah. Like, he comes and does it, the windows, and it's like 40 quid or whatever it is, and then he has to send us a text message after. Yeah. Here's like an online, you know, thing for zero. I'm yeah, like, just be. What a load of nonsense. Like, yeah, like just say, get, get that automated. Like a, yeah. And there's loads of free apps, isn't there? I mean, yeah. loads. I mean, I GoCardless is one of them. Yeah. GoCardless is exactly that. 
But one of the things that you've got to be careful of is doing direct debits for a fiver. Um, you don't want to make sure that you're paying loads of fees to all these third parties and not making any money yourself. Yeah. I'm going to leave the third question to last because I think we've kind of already touched on that. But um, do you think we should remove all cash payments and go online with payments only? We've sort of touched on that a minute ago, haven't we? I mean... But it's an industry where people are going to want to pay cash. Yeah, I think... Um, I look at our businesses. So Party Man World has gone cashless. It's only yeah. electronic payments. I look at Rossi Ice Cream Parlour that has a lot of woofdies, well off over 50s, Monday yeah. to Friday. I mean, we can't go cashless with them. If you've got a seafront business, you cannot go cashless. No. And actually, we've seen cash slightly increase in those businesses. Oh, really? I mean, cash as a... Uh, as a medium to pay is decreasing every year across all of our businesses and we know the cash is being used less and less people are using cards less and less they're using their phones to pay aren't they mm. it, it, and i do now yeah i don't even know i haven't seen my wallet last time i saw my wallet was when we last done a podcast and i gave chuds my card and i've got an apple air tag on it that's how little i use it because i need to use my air tag to find my to find, wallet yeah. to pay my card <laughs> yeah. i'm tapping my phone so yeah i mean look yeah you, you you want to make it as stress-free and easy as possible. That would be good for you, though. A little card reader, a little little striped card reader that they can literally do, like chip them. Like some of the, the market that you're going after, I think a lot of the, especially the older demographic who are there during the daytime at, at home when you're doing it, some of them will want to still pay cash. But I, I would, a lot I would actually say we, we would prefer you to pay electronically. It's just easier for us, but we will take cash if it's easier for yeah. you. Because you do, you know, like we, we've just done this on party pieces I'm absolutely amazed by this. So we took the business over uh, and talking about payments where you're in a marketplace. So so we just did, you just pay with your credit card or you could use Apple Pay. They were the two choices. And I said, well, let's get PayPal on there because I know a lot of people still want to pay by PayPal. Um, let's get ClearPay and Klarna because people want to pay in three. The very day that we put PayPal, ClearPay and Klarna on party pieces, which was only last week, all three mediums were used multiple times in the first day. I think within an hour we had 12 PayPal payments and I think we had eight ClearPay and six Klarna payments on day one of putting it on the website. And was that an increase in the overall sales of the day or had it come from that? Elsewhere? I haven't got enough data for that, but I would, I, and I don't want to, you know, my, my hunch is that it would have increased yeah, the overall. That'd be interesting to know. Um, and I will get the data and report back on the podcast in time, but what I can absolutely tell you is those mediums were used. Yeah. And if you haven't got PayPal and you haven't got Klarna and ClearPay, I mean, it's not right for this business, but it was for the, the, having multiple ways to pay, multiple shipping options, if that's your business, you know, I think it's important. Mm. You've got to make sure that you're the lubricant to people wanting to do business with you. Got to make it easy, haven't you, yeah. ultimately? Um, right. What type of systems and processes would you implement into a labor intensive business like this? Yeah, I mean, this to me, I'm very impressed that you've managed to get a thousand people paying you a thousand five or a month. I mean, that that, that is really impressive. Yes, good numbers in, that. in short times. Yeah, you know what? I'm, if you've managed to do that by knocking on doors and Facebook ads, imagine what you could do if you had a higher average order value more than a fiver. I mean, it is a it is a window into the possibilities of what you could really do in the future. You know, I've always said that I've had a lot of window cleaners on the pod over the past. So some of these window cleaners are proper, do not care about knocking on doors and saying, yeah. would you like me to do this for you? You know, knocking on your door. Would you like me to clean your bin for you? No, 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 yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah, all right. Yeah, I will actually. Like that is some real groundwork for mm. being able to take that into an opportunity where someone pays you more than a fiver because you've been trained to knock on doors and you don't care about the rejection. In fact, some days, I mean, what did you, um, you must have knocked on at least 100 doors in one day sometimes. Oh, yes, yeah, sometimes hundreds of doors. A new estate, they can have up to three, four, five hundred houses. And, yeah, we try and cover the whole estate. Of, but some days you do enough and you get rejected all day long. And then some days you hit the jackpot. But rejection just makes me want to get the customer signed up on the next door. 
So it don't really bother uh, me. There are, there's not many entrepreneurs and business owners uh, of this near 400 yeah. podcasts yeah. that we've done. I tell people to do this. And when I say knock on doors, I mean in the metaphorically. metaphorically. Yeah, me, you know, like obviously, like if I want to supply ice cream to a zoo, you know, I've got to work out how I get into the zoo and not just rely on bloody Facebook ads and Google yeah. ads. You know, uh, yeah, how am I actually going to, you know, drive to the zoo and say, can I see a manager, please? You know, and I probably get a no. But if I do that a hundred times, I'm going to start getting yeses. And that for me, like if I could get my ice cream into a zoo, that might be worth a hundred thousand of revenue a year to me. And over ten years, that could be worth a million pounds worth of lifetime value in terms of revenue per cut from the customer. And if you're trained to do that, and knock on doors, physically yeah. knock on doors. That's and you're doing it for a fiver, for a. Fiverr. Imagine if you hopscotch that into something where people are spending a thousand pound average order. Yeah, that would be brilliant. I mean, like you're the sort of person that I would want to just come into one of my businesses and just say, "Yeah, okay, off you go. Go and knock on a hundred doors." I know by the end of the week you're going to have me some new customers. Yeah, definitely. Like I, I always think to myself, the worst what they can say is no, but the best they can say is yes. So. I, just bring it on, really. I suppose once you've done a hundred, though, you get. I mean, you'll get better and better at the patter as well, won't you? Yeah, that's correct. Like because some people see you in the area, they already know. Like, do you know who you are by the time you knock? Kind of thing. As soon as they come to the door, really, because they've seen you uh, locally on the road cleaning. And then some areas, you just have to tell them um, and explain that we're the best in the business. At the bin cleaning side of things, so they should give us a try, really. Mm. I think there's some stuff you could do, like when you're cleaning as Can well. I, have you got signage acts? So, 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 I just want to say, you have got, to me, the ultimate skill set in early stage entrepreneurship, just put into the wrong industry. I'm just, I, I just want to say it. If you imagine if you'd uh, done that and you was knocking on people's doors and said, Do you want to skip? Are you having a clear out at some point this year? And you knock on the door and they go, you knock on a hundred doors, and three people say yes, and say a skips two hundred and fifty quid. You've helped yourself to seven hundred and fifty pounds. He hasn't there. even got to knock a thousand doors because they're no. already they're already open. Yeah. You're already customers or clients. If you had like a nice nicely designed like PDF, head, like, that's like you could like like Jim saying, um, do you need your, your driveway doing your gutters cleaned, your windows sorted out? Um, Hardly your, your anyone skips. is doing that now. And if you did yeah. that of a of a thousand, you have only got to get. You know, two percent of people who go, oh yeah, actually, that's another twenty people. And if you can, you know, if that average order becomes a hundred, a hundred pound a month, it's oh. another two grand that you've added to your bottom line. Yeah, definitely. So what we do, we have like a database with everyone's telephone numbers, email addresses, especially. And then when the warmer weather comes, we us pop them over an email to let them know that we're now offering pressure washing and driveway cleaning, patio cleaning render cleaning and then a lot of the time a lot of our customers that have the bins clean do book in with us because we they already use us for their bin cleaning how often are you still going out around the states and knocking on doors yourself do you still go and do that yeah yeah so i'm i'm cleaning i know too much and i know that you don't like that um because i don't like it either really but I, I know I need to get off the tools and just focus on door knocking, getting the customers in and getting more money into the business. Because working on the bins, I ain't go, go, going to go anywhere. Well, so you know that. What's stopping you from doing it? Cash flow? Yeah, yeah cash flow, really. Yeah, but... But I'm out, out of the month, I'm hitting the doors probably uh, out of 20 days a month, 20... Uh, probably uh, I'm hitting the doors roughly between 10 and 12 days a month yeah well that's I mean what I would be arguing is you know if this is at the start and you want to make more money you should be out Saturdays and Sundays and work seven days a week for a year and that's what I did oh well, yeah definitely yeah, yeah. With, with door knocking we, I do do uh, a lot of door knocking on Sundays because it's the best time because everyone's at home making their roast dinners does. yeah yeah Mate, like, you, I, it hurts my head that you do all that effort for a fiver. If you know, if you was an insurance broker and you knocked on a hundred doors and said, "Do you want insurance?" You'd be making a fortune. Yeah, it's just you've chosen a business where the average order value 
It's a fiver. Yeah, it's very small. Definitely. That's the the thinking that I have all the time, you know. We can't increase it. We can't really sell bins because the council, you know, re- some areas they replace them for free. Some areas they replace them with a small charge. So, uh, yeah, but you, you, you are building a valuable database. you just got to work out how to use that because those people will be spending money on others. I mean, can you, honestly, I, I honestly think if you knocked around, you know, you knock on a thousand doors a month and offered skips that are just drop off and go, you're going to get work. And you would get yeah, a pipeline definitely. of work. They go, do you know what? We are having something done in three months. Do you want to book it in now? You don't have to pay anything. We'll just put it in and we'll deliver it to you and we'll call you the day before just to remind you. God, what bit, you'd have such a big business very quickly. It's hardly anyone does this good old-fashioned mm. stuff anymore. Yeah. God, I mean, I, I actually like, I, I'm, I feel sad, not sad, but I've got a feeling of, God, that's a lot of effort for a fiver. Mm. And I just would... I'd rather you choose six, yeah, it's, six grand's worth of fivers. Though, it was a one-man band first business. Yeah, yeah, that, that is true. Yeah, d- yeah, definitely. Like also with this kind of business, you see, we, we are the most expensive in the whole of the Yorkshire region. So you well, there's people doing it for five right? quid, is there? No, there's people doing it for one pound fifty. So this is the problem we have because. Don't worry about that. I listen, I, I Mate, listen just, to your podcast Andre, all the time. Andre, don't worry about that. You're too good for this. You won't be doing this yeah. in a few years. You, yeah, so I listen you, to your podcast all the time about buying other businesses out. And when it comes to buying the other bean cleaners out, like, I don't really think... Al, Andre, Andre, out. listen to me. You ain't going to be doing yeah. this in a few... You're already dissatisfied with what you're making from it. It is a learning curve. It is teaching you how to go and get customers. You've had a brilliant education from it. I don't see you doing this in a few years because it's just not going to be enough for you. You're curious. You've come to my seminars twice. You, you know, you would have heard people on big money doing big things. Uh, and... Um, you, you you just won't see this as acceptable for the rest of your life. And so yeah. you might sell it to your manager that's running it or you will use this as a means to get higher value people. Yeah, definitely. So don't worry about what the rest of the competition is. I don't think you'll be doing this in a few years because you're already dissatisfied with it. What's the next question, JB? Oh, well, the, the final one was, do you think that this is a scalable business? I think we've yeah, I think we've answered answered that one. No, but in its um, current format. But it's I wish I had drug. you working for me, by the way, because <laughs> I would just say maybe, maybe one day <laughs> I would just go and say, "Can you go and see these?" All right, there's a thousand restaurants around London and coffee shops. Imagine him taking sample packs of the ice cream in. I would you just, went- off you go. Yeah, I went to a hundred. They said no. Like, and if you just. Oh, that stuff really, really works if you do it that consistent. Mm. Yeah, the, the door knocking, canvassing stuff definitely works more than personally to me over Facebook advertisement because they, you're going out and they're actually meeting you as well. So, which uh, you're building a relationship while you're at the door with them, which I think is a great thing to do. Do you have sandwich boards and that sort of stuff? So when you're working, so I've uh, one of my um, he, family he did, but like they kept knocking the bin when he was cleaning it. <laughs> <laughs> there was some sort of signage because my my um, someone in my wife's family, they've got a really they've run a really good little uh, painting and decorating business, and they've only ever worked on about seven streets because they are so flat out bit, and they they're, they're yeah, punchy yeah. in terms of price because he puts his van outside his sandwich boards outside that rely decor doing, decorating this place and they, they their next job comes from the same street or the neighbor or the or the friend of the friend and i think there's some bits and pieces you could be doing there but a thousand customers that you've already got if you if you had a, a nicely designed little pdf one page or a double sided bit of uh, like simple print, it wouldn't cost you a fortune. So, we also did you know we also do because people get conditioned to oh, they're the bin company, but do you know we also do gutters? Um, we do um, the skips, we do the gutter, uh, the, the driveways, the pressure washing, all those other bits and pieces. Don't forget the gutters, uh, don't forget the gutters, <laughs> the gutters. Um, I reckon you'd be surprised how many people would, would. 
pay you just because they didn't know that that was a service you did. Andre, look, I, I just want to just reiterate. No, yeah, look, yeah. You, you don't want to be running a business working this hard for a thousand pound a month for yourself. If you got rid of all your staff, you could do it all yourself and have six grand a month and that'd be a nice lifestyle business. I guess you're dissatisfied from it, but let me tell you now, it has trained you the ultimate mm. skill and that is the skill of getting customers. Once you know that, if you actually, I mean, it's scary what you can do with that skill set if you actually choose something that's worth more than a fiver. Yeah, definitely. Because when I first started, I had no clue apart from like Facebook. And I just thought, you know what? We're going to go out, hit the doors and just see the results. And I think the door knocking is definitely the best method. Good stuff. Well, you can do that with businesses as well, my friend. Yeah. Um, You'll do well. Right, well, uh, anything if you else you'd like to get to a million quid, by the way, yeah. you have, you've got to, a five, you've got to do 181,818 bin cleans if you want to get to that million quid. And if you'd like to hear more from motivational speaker James <laughs> Burr. <laughs> Live yeah. at Leicester Square Theatre. You can find him on Instagram at James Burr Official. And that really is his Instagram <laughs> handle. James Burr <laughs> Official. Thinks he's Taylor Swift. Uh, have you got any final questions that you'd like to ask to uh, to Jimbo before we before we end this episode, Andre? I oh, know no final questions. But just thank you for your time and having me on. It's Are you going to come and it. see our theatre show? Like, if you've come to the big seminars, thirty two pounds to come to London and see the theatre show. Yeah, You're going to be there, baby. Definite, Good. Yeah, definitely. Bring your brother that uh, d does the window cleaning round. I think you'll have a great night. See you there, baby. Y yeah, I will do. Thank you. Awesome Thank stuff. Thank Cheers. you for being on the show, Andre. There you go, Andre. What a fantastic... Good lessons there, JB. Great lessons there. I mean, he's doing all the right stuff in the wrong industry. Yes. He is. I mean, there'd be loads of business owners listening and going, oh, I'd love him to work for me. He's oh, just yeah. gonna, knocked on a hundred doors the, the and doesn't fear, care if he says the, stuff. That is the biggest fear that most people have. And that is, that is the difference maker, isn't it? But what a lot of entrepreneurs and they want salespeople. That's what they want them to do. Mm. But what we've now got is salesmen that rely on a marketing or salespeople that rely on a marketing team that are getting yeah. them the warm, qualified leads and then they're closing them. Cold outreach is yeah. not knocking a door to these people. It's LinkedIn and yeah. WhatsApps and emails and stuff. Someone like that who's actually willing to go knock on a door and get told no to their face. And if you, if you go in early entrepreneurship stories, that is what all the super successful done. Mm. Richard Branson, Steve Jobs. If you think about Steve Jobs, I love telling that little story of him just ringing up Packard Bell and just <laughs> saying, can I have some free computer stuff, yeah. please? Because I can't finish my computer. And it actually got through to the owner of Packard Bell. That's and, right, yeah. And they just went, do you want a job as well? You know, like that, that tenacious pick up mm. the phone. Just ask. Just, just ask. ask. Like, what's yeah. the worst that could happen? Yeah. In that instance there, like Andre said, you know, every time, every time that... Uh, how you how know, many doors do you think you have to... I'll ask you this question. How many doors would you have to knock on and get the no's before that you just don't care anymore? That first... Right, that first nervous knock. I reckon after the first no, be like, oh, okay, that doesn't hurt as much. Yeah, yeah. I, or do I you reckon, think it would happen yeah, that quick? Yeah, I reckon so. What stops people doing this? Because... It's fear, isn't no it? No one's the, doing the, it, are the, they? The aren't greatest they? fear in the world, more than death, is public speaking. We are, we are just irrational human beings. We want to fit in. We are societal animals, aren't we? We don't no. like no because no means that we can't be part of that person's tribe. It's like a deep-seated psychology as to why we don't like it. And you can read books like, you know, Go For No and all this sort of stuff. And, and, and What's that? Go For No? Go For No is a book, yeah. It's a sales book. Go For No. What, what, and the, have you read it? The premise is um, just get as many no's as you can because it gets you close to a yes. I'll save you the time. <laughs> that's, <laughs> the, loads of that's the abridged version. That's the, yeah, that's the, that's the cliff notes. Uh, but yeah, that that's it in essence. But it's um, it doesn't. But it doesn't. But it's also the the psychology of doing this stuff because I remember uh, I had a couple of little buy to let houses in Sheffield and I thought the way I'm going to get more properties. Is, is going door to door. So I printed off leaflets and I put a leaflet through the door of every house in S14. Every single house. And the first street, I was absolutely cacking myself. I was like, oh, what if, a, you know, if you, because you're walking into people's houses, like you're walking up to their door and what if, what if they open the door? What if they open the door? And see that they shirt. See, they see you coming down the, the <laughs> and they think you're a shortbread salesman or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, or, 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 a, yes. or, a, or a dog, you know, and all that stuff. But do you know what? After, after a little while, 
there's like a le- I had like a weird element of pride because it was snowing it was December it was so yeah. cold and I was like there's no one else who's doing this right now yeah. there's no one else and this is what will get me yeah. the result I mean the result was I ended up with a grand total of two houses in S14 I didn't quite become the medium <laughs> the uh, the property magnate that I expected to be do you know what but it is something uh, about but if you it. go back into the 60s and 70s and the 50s on the door salespeople was how it was done yeah and then that's become less and less and you know the being more unusual in a usual world because that is so unusual for people to do that stuff now i mean i i've had one person knock on my door and it was great ormond street charity and they were trying to get me to sign up for a i know it's a half an hour walk from the road to your front door though isn't it daniel <laughs> for your estate <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Sinclair. Mr. Sinclair, could you open the gates for me? And um, but no, he, Great Ormond Street. I'm not interested today. But he was Plus, equals S. He, on your way. <laughs> he was. He was coming around in the evening, raising money for that charity. Yeah. Um, and I was. I was like, God, that guy. I'd love him to work for me. Yeah. We had we had two that came around to the house yesterday. We had, I've not had any since we moved to our new house. What like, were they were trying to sell you? Charity again. Yeah. It's charity again. I was like, that is a hard slog. Yeah. See, but that is the psychology, isn't it? I shut the door and I literally went, that's a hard slog, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's a hard slog. Yeah. But you do, you've got an element of respect for people like that. If, he, if someone like that, he's got a lovely personality, clearly does a good job. He's already got a thousand customers. He said, hey, we've got a thousand customers in the local area. We do yeah. their bin cleaning. Do you need your bins cleaned? Yeah. Good on him. Just- you don't do, but we'll spend the money on ads and we'll give the money to Zuckerberg and we'll give the money to Larry and Serge and we'll do TikTok. And he's probably thought, oh, you know, I could do some funny dances with my bins and that will drive me customers. No, do you know what? Walk down the end of the driveway, knock on the door. Have you got, you know, got a filthy bin I can sort out? Mm. There it's you interesting. go. I just, uh, do you know what I would love? Chuds, can we make this happen? Imagine... Someone who's done the sort of stuff that you've done in business. Like, it's quite big, quite impressive scale that you've got now, right? Imagine you going up to Sheffield and helping him sort his business out and scaling that thing up and knocking doors. Let's put James Sinclair knocking doors in Sheffield to clean a bin for a fiver. Hmm. Who's with me? If you'd like to see this happen, but comment the word that, bin on I, YouTube. I, 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 I believe in all that stuff, you know, that's why. But I don't want him. I don't think I can grow it because it's only a fiver. I think could. I think you could. I would be doing I think you're the things being too humble. I would. <laughs> I think I would do it and say, "Yeah, actually, to be fair, you would. You'd be telling with like it'd be like day two, and James Sinclair's turned up with a bin truck. <laughs> it'd be like, no, I just think, how, how many bins have you got to get? Well, you said one hundred eighty-one thousand <laughs> of fivers to build a million-pound business. You know, I just, I would try and get a secondary school and get their waste collection, or I would try and get an office block and get their waste in. Yeah, you know, there would. Oh, that's why I always say, like, actually, if you choose the ten people that you know that are your size to, you know, like, if you could get ten secondary schools, ten um, big five hundred people plus office blocks, you know that they're producing a lot of waste. I would contact those people, and work yeah. out how to get them. So it's not just the knocking on the door; it's knocking on the right door as well. Yeah, you know, I. I I mean, people do knock on my door and ask to sell products and services to us, but nowhere near. Sometimes you turn up now to sell a product and service yeah. by the sounds of it. Yeah, nowhere, Sinclair. nowhere near as much as I think people should be doing. Mm. Well, I shouldn't say this now because everyone will be just, <laughs> you know, you said on your podcast. You said, yeah, yeah. But I think Come people, Monday morning, they'll be there knocking on Rossi's door. People are much more into search engine optimization, pay per click, as am I. Facebook, you know, I'm doing all that stuff, but you shouldn't forget the old fashioned stuff. It no. really does work. Do the new, but don't forget the old. Yeah. There you go. Well, if you have enjoyed this episode and you would like to get more wisdom and insights like this live in your face, you can. Leicester Square Theatre on the 10th of June, 7 p.m. And it's just 32 squidaroonies. Come and join the three to four hundred of our... I saw a little Shopify notification. Got made some more cash there, have you? Happy days. Yeah. Mix the new with the old. Mix the new with the old. What have you just sold on Shopify? Can you tell us? What no, um, what have we just sold? We've just sold... Live. Uh, a personalised bubble balloon in a box, Navy Lux. Fantastic. Thirty-eight ninety-nine. Is it? Yeah. That's good money, isn't it? Mm. There you go. They've gone up with inflation. Hey! hey. Come on now, he's not having a good time. Some stuff as well. 
some book orders are come through. People it's are all, buying it's the James Sinclair you, books. Yeah. That's why you ain't got time to knock on doors because the, the door knockers come to you, didn't they? You there we go. Doors, there we go. Thanks for listening, guys. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel and hit us in the comments. Uh, let us know what you think of this episode and what we should be doing differently, especially if you think oh, I'm better than him. <laughs> yeah. And don't forget to comment the word bin if you'd like to see James Sinclair doing like an undercover boss style bin collection company Absolutely. up in Sheffield. And I will make that happen. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, also, <laughs> for charity, we are trying to get some new clothes for James <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we're doing it setting up a just giving page maybe Andre could get some clothes out of the bin for me yeah <laughs> there we go <laughs> thanks for watching gang